gentlemen, uh, welcome with me the beautiful and talented Miss Calpurnia Adams. Oh! Hi, hi, Trailer Park. How are you? <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't really impersonate Marilyn Monroe, but I do desecrate her memory by butchering her songs. And you're about to get a little bit of that now. Feel free to turn it way up, Mr. DJ. There we go. I love one of the greedy kind. Kevin, all of my what's a simple. Kevin, I know what's on your mind. Kevin, it's personalized. <sighs> I'm not resting until I find <sighs> what would make your eyes glisten, Kevin, with joy. <laughs> now listen, big girl. Boy, I wanna be loved by you, just you, Kevin, and nobody else but you. <laughs> I wanna be loved by you uh, alone, Kevin. <laughs> boo boo, but do. Tiffany, Cardio, Black Star, Roscoe, talk to me, Winston, tell me all about it. I'm blind without these. A kiss on the hand, maybe, quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. A kiss may be grand, but it won't pay the rental on your humble flat. Or help you at the automat, whatever that is. Men grow cold as girls grow old, and we all lose our charms in the end. But square cut or pear shape, these rocks, they don't lose their shape. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> Cartier. <laughs> Black Star. Let's go. Me, Winston, tell me all about it. I can't really dance, but I have this. There may come a time when a lass needs a lawyer, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. There may come a time when a high-point employer thinks you're awful nice. But get that ice or else no dice. He's your guy when stocks are high, but beware when they start to descend. It's then that those louses, they all go back to their spouses. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. The breakdown. <gasps> I'm not as young as I was. I heard of affairs that are strictly platonic. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. And I think affairs that you sh must keep platonic are better bets. Ooh, if little bitty pets get big baguettes, that's a bracelet. A baguette is a bracelet. Look it up. And you stand when you end. Stiff back, stiff knees. You stand straight at Balboa RV Park. Diamonds! Diamonds! I don't mean rhinestones, but diamonds. Hands girls, best friend. Best friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm getting over a cold, oh, so. Gilbertia it's a little Adams. more. It's a little more B. Arthur than Marilyn. <laughs> Uh, that was lovely. Oh my yeah. goodness. Personalized. Uh, Ms. Adams. Like in gentlemen prefer blondes, right? 
also I'm blind. <laughs> I did notice, that here's what I liked about it, is that you take your glasses out of your elaborate bosom, yeah. you say to the audience, I can't see without these, <laughs> and you put them on. I think it's something we can learn from this, you know? I, my act is always like, I'm here with you, or I, I'm not that untouchable goddess, like, obviously. Like, <laughs> Like some of us. <laughs> Untouchable goddess. Who are, you know, after the show, I'm constantly like, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm too important. <laughs> oh, Calpurnia, I am so delighted that you are here. And Thank full you. disclosure, Calpurnia and I have met before. Mm -hmm. Yes. We had, a little, we had a little meeting here in the RV park. A tete a tete. A tete a tete. <laughs> it's true, that means head to head in French. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. And uh, we um, met and we talked and we ran around the RV park. Yes. And we introduced you to Marilyn. In fact, I encourage you to go to the Trailer Trash Talent Review YouTube channel where you can find a link to Austin eventually. Um, and uh, you'll see the complete interview. You'll also see the video of Kevin and I in the batting cages and miniature golf and stuff oh. like that. So there's lots of stuff, fun video there. So, but we met because you introduced yourself to me <laughs> and you said, hello, Dawn. I read your article in LA Weekly and you should know that I am also trailer trash. Yes. I am Tennessee born and bred. I uh, uh, did live in a trailer at one point uh, in my youth, as you all should, if you're gonna be from Tennessee. And <laughs> when I heard about this show, I was like, it's a match made in heaven. It is, because you, we, have, we have the mural of Marilyn Monroe on the wall out there. We got the wings here, you're an angel, from somebody's perspective, AKA uh. Charles is. You look like an <laughs> angel right now. Charles. Charles. Did you know Charles yes. is a single fella? <laughs> Charles, I told you. <laughs> he he Do you wears clothes. <laughs> He's actually got a really nice trailer, Calvernia. Oh. Um, now you, I mentioned before you came on that you have this like crazy resume, and it is so incredible. First of all, you have won a Peabody Award. Oh. <laughs> I know. I had to Google it. Um, that's for broadcasting. Also. <laughs> You are celebrated. Rolling Stone has called you bright and glittery. Fact. Oh, uh, ABC called you honest and genuine. True. And LA Weekly, and they can spot talent, <laughs> um, <laughs> said you were a star, gorgeous, dazzling. Jared Leto thanked you by name in his Oscar acceptance speech. Oh, God. Uh, and just to throw this out there, you are also a celebrated war veteran. You served as a field medic in the d uh, Desert Storm. Yes, the first Desert Storm. I was a com field combat medic with the Marines. Thank you. Which I, I know. <laughs> Guys, and I understand that you looked a little different when you worked as a field medic. <laughs> However, I want you Slightly. to know that if I'm ever hurt somewhere, in a field or otherwise, and my medic doesn't look exactly like you look right now, <laughs> I'm gonna be like, next, yeah. leave me. <laughs> I know the medics get better. <laughs> I live to serve, and I do have my camouflage sequins for when I'm. <laughs> you were very, so very you stealthy. Blend in, blend in, yeah. So maybe you can illuminate us as to how it is possible that you can have all of this uh, amazingness and be merely 26 years old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my hair is only a few years old, but uh, it's a wig. But <laughs> I, I have real hair. We too. bring it all out here, right. Calpurnia. We let the audience see all those. of the devices we got here. No, um, well, you know, I was born in Nashville, Tennessee, in 1971, good year. and um, it was a good year. And uh, in Nashville, you know, I I am a transsexual woman. So when I served with the Marines in the Navy as a combat medic in the first Gulf War in Saudi Arabia. You know, that was then, and this is now. So it's Do you go to a lot of veterans uh, uh, events? 
I, um, well, th there was a time when I didn't feel welcome. Oh, but <laughs> now <laughs> people, all right, I risk my life too. But uh, people have gotten a lot cooler. And it, it was always, you know, I was there, but I always kind of wanted to be Betty Grable or Marilyn, you know, singing to the troops or whatever. So it's, it's been great to see people open their arms to me nowadays. That's fantastic. And do you often go home to Tennessee? I usually go once a year. You know, you can't get no food like your mom is cooking. So I had to go home and get that, you know, good old Tennessee fried chicken and biscuits and just butter drenching everything and sweet tea and all that. So, you know, I, I go home as often as I can. <laughs> and they are lucky to have you. Now, I mentioned in the list of amazing things that you've done, I mentioned that Jared Leto mentioned you by name in his Oscar acceptance speech. And I think we have the picture here. Now, this is... Jared Leto's transformation, one, one of the images of him, in the movie The Dallas Buyers Club, where he also played uh, right. a transgender I did woman. not do his makeup. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like, no, sir. And, um, and you advise him. Now, what was one of the things that J Jared Leto came to you for counsel for? What was some, an example of something that you did for him? Well, he was playing a trans woman in the 80s who had no money, no access to, you know, sort of any enhancements or anything, just kind of living on the street and struggling to survive. And I've done years of activism work, you know, where I've tried to help out people who are struggling, you know, rejected by their families and, and by society. So they do end up on the street, you know, with nothing and just a uh, half dying and this character was very much like the people that I've helped over the years so Jared and I just talked and talked and talked about that but also I read the entire script for him into a tape recorder and he told me at the after party he was like I listened to your voice for like 200 hours just on a loop me saying the lines which is really kind of weird I I don't think you know what would have been kind of funny is if you could have snuck just a couple of Michael Leon Woolley in there. Yeah, that would have been. You could have been like, okay, so this is the higher vent, and then just like, I don't know, like a very deep, and be just, like, turn and be like, yeah. all right, that's what she said we're supposed to do. Well, I guess. And so she's, I, her, she's the expert. I, he may may not have gotten the Oscar if that had happened. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been like, interesting choice uh, choices that you made there. Now you've also got a lot of stuff coming up. You said you've got an album coming out or something. What what can yes. we see coming from you next? Well, I I only rarely do this Marilyn shtick. I, it was, you know, I thought for Don and y'all, I'd, I'd bring it out. Mm -hmm. But um, I actually play the fiddle and the harp and the mandolin and the dulcimer. Well, not the mandolin. I don't know why I said that. But all, all the... <laughs> I don't know either, because that's a random... Mandolin's so not even easy to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I play a lot of uh, bluegrassy type instruments. I grew up, you know, playing in church with my mom and daddy. And um, so I'm uh, writing an album of, of original acoustic music. You know, if you like Dolly's uh, uh, bluegrass stuff, if you like Emmy Lou Harris and all that, I think you might like me. Just Google it. There's not a lot of Calpurnias out there. And um, I'm going to have an album coming out soon. I just toured Europe with it. Uh, went all over to Switzerland and London and, and all that. And so I'm going to be bringing it out uh, around about January. We'd love, maybe we can hear some of your bluegrass music someday. Oh, yeah. I would love. I'll wear my natural look. You know, I should tell you, Halloween, I was watching Adam's Family. Yes. And I, guess what? All of a sudden, across the screen, they talk about Calpurnia Adams as one of the, is that where your name came from? I heard it three times. That's the magic number. In high school, uh, Julius Caesar's wife is Calpurnia in Shakespeare. Then in the book To Kill a Mockingbird, the, the maid who's like a mother to Scout and Jim, her name is Calpurnia. And then the third time I heard it was in the Adams Family movie. And she, they were like, Calpurnia Adams, she enslaved a minister dancing naked in the town square and was burned as a witch in 1706. And I was like, that's me. Yep. <laughs> You're like, soul, that's my name. <laughs> <laughs> well, Calpurnia, you have been an amazing guest, and I, I, I do have one more request from you. What? Before you, before you leave, and I, I hope this doesn't come as too much of a surprise. Um, but <clears throat> as it is a certain young man's birthday, 
and as you do resemble a famous birthday song singer. I'm wondering if you would be so kind as to lead us in the birthday boy's final birthday song. Wait, he has a costume change. Oh. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> and um, so do we need to physically prepare Kevin in any way for the reception uh, of this thing, song? Will somebody throw an empty chair right to the center oh, stage and okay. have Kevin have a seat in Oh, it. good. So Kevin yeah. with his back to the audience. Prob or yeah. should we have Kevin? <laughs> yeah, facing the audience. Facing yeah. the audience. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, the other the way. Audience. Yeah, so. <laughs> Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. <laughs> All right, now everybody join in with me, okay? Because Marilyn, actually she wasn't that great of a singer. She just had a lot of uh, support. <laughs> Here we go. Now everybody, let's all sing together. Here we go, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you, Kevin. Happy birthday to you, Kevin. Happy birthday, dear Kevin. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Yay! Happy birthday! And I know there's a chance you can't see those, so I'll give those back. Ladies and gentlemen, please, let's give a great big thank you to the beautiful and talented Calpurnia Adams. Thank you, thank you, thank you.